going to open a Psalm 22 this evening, and it reads, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but I, do not, I find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. And your fathers trusted, they trusted, and you delivered them. To you they cried and were rescued. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by mankind and despised by the people. All who see me mock me, they make mouths at me, they wag their heads. He trusts in the Lord, let him deliver him, let him rescue him, for he delights in him. Yet you are he who took me from the womb, you made me trust as you, trust you at my mother's breast. On you as I cast from my birth and from my mother's womb, you have been my God. Be not far from me, for trouble is near and there is none to help. Many bulls encompass me, strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me like a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like, a, like water, and all my bones are out of joint, and my heart is like wax. It is melted within my breast, my strength is dried up like a pot's herd, and my tongue sticks to my jaws, you lay me in the dust of death. For dogs encompass me, and a company of evildoers encircles me, they have pierced my hands and feet. I can count all my bones, they stare and gloat over me. They divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O Lord, do not be far off. O you, my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my precious life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion. You have rescued me from the horns of the wild oxen. I will tell of your name to my brothers in the midst of the congregation. I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, and glorify him, and stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he has not despised or abhorred the affliction of the afflicted, and he has not hidden his face from him, but has heard from when he cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows will perform before those who fear him. The afflicted shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember, and the turn of the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall worship before you. For kingship belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. All the prosperous of the earth eat and worship. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, even the one who, who could not keep himself alive. Posterity shall serve him, and it shall be told of the Lord to the coming generation. They shall come and proclaim his righteousness to the people yet unborn, that he has done it. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you this evening to, to remember the sacrifice that your son made um, so the penalty that was due us could be paid in full. Father, just as we've read the 22nd Psalm, we read of things that were foretold a thousand years before Christ lived them out. As David wrote, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Christ would utter the same words from the cross as he was dying in agony. As David was mocked in verse 7, we know that our Savior was mocked for the truth that he spoke. We also read of the physical agony that he would face as his bones were out of joint on the cross and life left his body. However, we know that he was victorious in accomplishing what he set out to do. As the psalm ends, that they shall come and proclaim his righteousness to a people yet unborn, that he has done it. We know that your son lived a perfect, sinless life, making him righteous, and that made him to be the perfect sacrifice once and for all for our sins. And it is with praise and thanksgiving that we come to you tonight, remembering the suffering he faced because of our sin and iniquity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. And Tony's got some special music for the evening.
is midnight and on all is brown. A star is dim that lately shone. Is midnight in the garden now. A suffering Savior prays. book of Luke this evening, um, chapter 2, verse 31 through 34, and 54 through 62. Luke 22, verse 31. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan demanded to have you, that he might sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned again, Strengthen your brothers. Peter said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you, both to prison and to death. And Jesus said, I tell you, Peter the rooster will not crow this day until you deny me three times that you know me. Then they seized him and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house. And Peter was following at a distance. And when they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat down among them. Then a servant girl, seeing him as he sat in the light and looking closely at him, said, This also was with this man also was with him. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. And a little later someone else saw him and said, You also are one of them. But Peter said, Man, I am not. And after an interval of about an hour, still another insisted, saying, Certainly this man also was with him, for he too was a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are talking about. And immediately while he was still speaking, the rooster crowed, and the Lord turned and looked at Peter. And Peter remembered the saying of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the rooster crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. When I think of Good Friday... Um, there often comes to mind a, a conversation I'd had with an individual several years ago, and they were, were mocking the idea of Good Friday. They said, why do you call it good? Your guy died. 
um, he died. And, and when we look at scripture and we, we see a story like Peter, how Christ predicted that he was going to deny him, um, and then he does. And this is a good reminder for each one of us of why do we call this Good Friday? Um, because each one of us, we will face troubles, we will fail in our lives. Um, sometimes that is caused by our own sin and iniquity. Sometimes it's caused by someone else. But there's other times where we may not even know why we're going through what it is that we're going through. However, the key to getting through it, no matter the cause, is found in Good Friday. And as we start looking at this section, um, verse 31, as Jesus is, is giving Peter this warning, um, he says, Satan demanded to have you. And when we look at that verse, that, those, that word, you, um, it's easy in our English translations to look at it and think that he's simply talking about Peter. Um, but in the Greek, the, the you that is used there, it is actually plural. Um, Jesus is telling him that all of the disciples will have problems. All of them will struggle. There is going to be this attack against them. And later on in Peter's life, he would write to the persecuted church. And in 1 Peter 4.12, he would write these words, Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in so far as you share Christ's sufferings that you may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed because the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. But let no one, let none of you suffer as a murderer or a thief or an evildoer as a meddler. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in that name. And I wonder if Peter thought of that night that Jesus warned him, saying that Satan is going to sift you like wheat. Um, but Jesus says, but I have prayed for you. I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. And he says, that after this, he says, and after you have turned again, strengthen your brothers. And Jesus is giving Peter this warning setting it up to say, like, you are going to deny me. You will weep, you will repent, but even though all of this happens, you will be used by me to help others after this trial you are about to go through. And in verse 33, Peter said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you both to prison and to death. Peter knew who Christ was. As he calls him Lord, he knew that he was sovereign over the universe. He knew that he was in control. But then Jesus says, I tell you, Peter, you will deny me three times today. Peter had all of the right doctrine. He had all of the right theology. But his body had not yet caught up. He did not realize that everything to know about Christ, he did not know the words he would speak to Pilate. In John 19, verse 10, so Pilate said to him, you will, not, will you, you will not speak to me? Do you not know that I have authority to release you and authority to crucify you? Jesus answered him, you would have no authority over me at all unless it had been given you from above, therefore who delivered me over to you as the greater sin. Jesus knew that he would be abandoned. He knew that he would be denied, but he came to stay the course. He stayed the, stay the course. Because he knew that he came to save sinners like you and me. And in this story of Peter, we know that he's putting on the display of our need. 
Because each one of us breaks the first commandment in Exodus 23. Therefore, you shall have no other gods before me. And he does. Peter places his own comfort, his own, his own comfort ahead of what he had just spoke. In verse 54, it says, And they seized him and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house. And Peter was following at a distance. Some hours earlier, Peter said, I will go to prison. I will go to death to you. And now, instead of being right there next to him, he is following him at a distance. He is distancing himself from the one he had just called Lord. And he denies him. He says, woman, I do not know him. Man, I am not. Man, I do not know what you are talking about. Then we get down to verse 61. And it says, And the Lord turned and looked at Peter. While Christ had been arrested as he is being drug away in the midst of all of that, he took the time to look at Peter. He took time to look at him in that moment of sin. And the question is, is was it a look of condemnation or was it a look of I've got you and this is why I came and in 62 it says and he went out and he wept bitterly while he was face to face with Jesus he was bold and he would go to prison and he would die with him when we read the account in Matthew 26 58 we read these words and Peter was following with him at a distance as far as the courtyard of the high priest. And going inside, he sat with the guards to see the end. When he took his eyes off Jesus and sat down with the enemy, this is when he failed. But as he looks to Jesus again, he went out and wept bitterly because he now knew his sin and his need for Jesus. And in John 19, verse 28, we hear Jesus' final words on the cross. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said to fulfill the scripture, I thirst. A jar full of sour wine stood there, so they put a sponge full of the sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. As he knew Peter would sin against him, he still went to the cross because he knew that Peter needed that forgiveness of sins. He has called us to him despite knowing that we would take our eyes off him and sit with the enemy daily. And we will struggle with this until we are in his glory. But despite all of that, he went to the cross to be able to say, it is finished for you as well. It is Good Friday because we are able to look to the cross to see what he did for us. He took our sin upon him so that we could have his righteousness. And another thing that Christ did on the night that he was betrayed is he instituted the Lord's Supper in Luke 22. And when the hour came, he reclined at table on the apostles with him. And he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on until I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, the cup after they had eaten, saying, this cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. 
And we have the table set here tonight for us. And we're going to just do it a little different 